Yes, I have to confess the. Uh, the <laughs> I highlighted some of this to make it easier to find, and I wrote in the page numbers on the, on the previous copy I gave you. The page numbers weren't there, so. So the question we're going to look at tonight is whether the great tribulation mentioned in Matthew is the same as the great tribulation mentioned in the book of Revelation. And uh, so, so that's what I want us to take a look at. And um, I mentioned last week, we, we talked about this some last week, but I felt like I really didn't uh, I tried a different approach and it wasn't as effective as I'd hoped, so I wanted to kind of go back over it tonight. And, and I, hope that, I hope this will help that I've highlighted some sections. But one thing I mentioned last week when, we, when you talk to a real estate agent, they'll say oftentimes the most important um, you know, thing about the purchase of a house is location. Location, location, location. That's first, second, and third most important things. When you're studying the scriptures, uh, context is one of the most important questions. So I want us to look at, uh, and by the way, this is from a harmony of the gospels. So it puts, and I really love to study the gospels this way, and you can purchase one of these. In fact, you can even go online and download a PDF of a harmony of the gospels, and it will uh, show you what each gospel shares about a certain event or you know teaching in Jesus life so uh, so this is from uh, the Olivet Discourse and I highlighted the section here on Mark 13 verse 2 and the disciple the disciples were talking about well, what magnificent buildings this temple is just so magnificent in verse 2, Jesus says, Do you see all these great buildings? Replied Jesus. Not one stone here will be left on another. Every one will be thrown down. And then as Jesus was sitting on the Mount of Olives opposite the temple, Peter, James, John, and Andrew asked him privately, Tell us, when will these things happen? Now, uh, before I read the next sentence, what do you think these things refers to at this point from the context? Yeah, the destruction of the temple. Yeah. And uh, you got the passage in Matthew 24, and it says much the same thing. I'll tell you the truth. Not one stone here will be left on another. I didn't highlight it, but I think you can see where I'm reading from in Matthew 24 there, right next to it. And then as Jesus was sitting on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately. Tell us, they said, when will this happen? When will this happen? So instead of these things, it's this. Okay, It's the destruction of the temple. Over in uh, Luke 21, verses 5 through 7, it's the same thing. Uh, he talks about the temple being torn down in verse, uh, is that six? Even at mag magnified, it's still a little hard to read some of those numbers. And then in verse seven, when will these things happen? All right, and he's, again, they're asking specifically about the destruction of the temple. So you would think in the next section, Jesus is talking some about the destruction of the temple. Now I also go back to Matthew 24, uh, verse uh, 3 at the end of it. And it, it also says there, And what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? So Jesus is answering a couple of questions here. One is, when will the temple be torn down, destroyed, and the other is, uh, when will your second, what will be the signs for your second coming? Okay, um, question or comment that, about that before we move on? All right, let's move on then, and uh, 
Let's look at Jesus' answer. Now, I find this very interesting. In Mark 13, and, and the, the Mark column is in the middle there. Mark 13, verse 5. Everyone see where that is? 5 through 13. Jesus said to them, watch out that no one deceives you. Now, why do I find that remarkable, interesting? These disciples had been with him for three years. If anybody knew Jesus, it was them. And still, he says, be careful no one deceives you. Even they could be deceived. So if they could be deceived, you and I could be deceived as believers. So I think this uh, kind of indicates to us uh, how we need to stay, uh, you know, committed to the Lord in our personal lives, and we need to study his word and try to understand it properly so we didn't, don't end up being deceived. And a lot of people have been deceived in various ways, as you're probably aware. I don't want to be one of them. I, I want to know what the truth is and I want to live by the truth. Um, uh, so anyway, uh, you know, watch out, no one deceives you. And then it says, uh, so are yeah. you saying that people that hold a certain view are deceiving? Well, okay. So you can study the scriptures and you can misunderstand the scriptures. I think I've done that at times. I, I try not to, but it can happen to any of us. There are also people, and, and I'm glad you asked this question, because there are also people out there who intentionally seek to deceive people. Yeah, there are some people who may be deceived and they're leading others into deception, but I think there's other people who know they're deceiving others and they do it because they're benefiting from it. Now, I'm not, I'm not good at uh, judging people's motives, so I, I try not to get too involved in that, uh, but I think there's both kinds of people out there. Uh, I remember when, <laughs> very early in the, in the ministry, we, I went as a pastor of Chapel of the Lake, it was called, and we had some Mormons visit us on a Sunday night, and and they began to talk about Mormonism and and how it was, you know, that what they believed. And I said, now you know that's not what the Mormons teach. Oh no, no, uh, no, you, you're not. You don't know what the Mormons teach. I said, yes, I do. I've got their books. I know what their official writings say. And if you come back next week, I will bring the books with me and I will show you from their own books what the Mormons teach in their books. Uh, they didn't show up the next Sunday night. I don't know why. I would have I brought the books, you know, I hope to talk to them. Uh, now, again, I, I, I don't want to judge people. I, I'm sure some of those Mormons are sincerely deceived. They've been misled. Uh, others, I think, you know, other, and that, again, I, I hate to judge, but I think there's other people that are misleading others intentionally for their own benefit. Well, and that happens in the Christian churches as it well. It can happen, it certainly can, yes. It certainly can. And of course, it grieves me when I hear about that type of thing happening. And and uh, so, another question, comment? Okay, so um, he says, Mark, I'm, I'm still in Mark 13, verse 5. And I think this is an NIV um, gospel harmony, so it may differ just a little bit from what I'm going to read to you. But it says in Mark 13, verse 5, And Jesus began to say to them, See to it that no one misleads you. Many will come in my name saying, I am he and will mislead many. When you hear of wars and rumors of wars, do not be frightened. Those things must take place, but that is not yet the end. For nation will rise up against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes in various places. There will also be famines. 
These things are the merely the beginning of birth pangs. Now, have you ever heard someone teach something like this? The apostles believed that Jesus could return at any moment. Anyone ever heard something like that? Oh yeah, yeah. Some people believe that. Now look again at what he says. When you hear of wars, room of war of wars, nation rising up against nation, kingdom against kingdom, these things are merely the beginning of birth pangs. Now, if you look over, uh, I highlighted uh, the beginning of birth pangs, and I highlighted in Luke 21, verse 9, the way Luke said this. Instead of using this metaphor, he says, these things must happen first, but the end will not come right away. Okay, I'm on page 188 on this little handout I gave you. Do you see that in the upper right, everyone? Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll take it that everyone sees it. Yes. All right, if Jesus tells them the end will not come right away, do you really think they're expecting he's going to come at any moment? I don't. Well, but how long did they live? Well, they, some of them lived, uh, the Apostle John, as far as we know, lived the longest. Uh, and uh, he died around the end of the first century. The others died before him. But he's, now you may say, well, they thought maybe Jesus would come at the end of their lifetime or close to the end of their, maybe, maybe. But come at any moment? I would say at this moment, no, they didn't think that. Because Jesus says the end will not come right away. And then I highlighted another verse. And if you go back over to Mark, Mark 13, verse 10, and the gospel must first be preached to all nations. So he talks about you're going to be flogged in the synagogues. They're going to persecute you and the gospel must be preached to all nations. So again, uh, they may have thought before the end of our lives, the gospel would be preached to all nations, but they knew that things, certain things had to happen before the, the end came. But I mean, do you see, like, that they would have thought some of these things well, they may have thought some of them did, and particularly the destruction of the temple. Well, I mean, you know, being flogged and put in the synagogues and stuff, I mean, that kind of stuff all happened. That it? happened in their lifetime, yeah. Oh, that, that reminds me, there's something else here. Um, Jesus began to see, say to them, that's Mark 13, verse 5. So he, he's talking to his disciples. And he, he's telling them, uh, certain things are going to happen to you. Um, so, I mean, sometimes when we read this, we, we think we start thinking about the future and we, we don't connect to the fact he is talking to his disciples and he's telling them certain things are going to happen to you. And, and again, these things, according to those verses we looked at, refer, refer earlier to, uh, to the destruction of the temple. Now, some may say, well, these things can also refer to some things that happen in the future that are going to happen in the future. And I think that's certainly possible, too. Uh, but I think clearly uh, they ask about the destruction of the temple, and he's telling them when it's going to happen. Now you may say, why make a big deal about this? Because some people take all of this and apply it to the future. And they will say that none of it has been fulfilled. None of it. Uh, John MacArthur has written a book on the second coming. And that's basically his approach. Yeah. 
Now, I have a lot of respect for John MacArthur, by the way. I think he's wrong about some things. Well, I tried not to look at my study notes because my God, John MacArthur Bible. <laughs> 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 I know that he is, uh, that he's definitely different on that. But, uh, you know, you just hear people talking and it's like, it's like they imagine that we're in the worst, you know, the world is in the worst shape ever right now. But probably people 50 years ago thought that, didn't they? I mean, every, oh, yeah. every time, every passage of time. World War I, World War II. <laughs> yeah, everybody, I mean, you could see uh, nations against, I mean, you know, things that people would have in their mind to believe that this is what we have to live in. The most important disciples, though, you know, I, I don't know exactly what they were thinking. It doesn't really say what they were thinking, but Jesus is saying all this before he died, before he got crucified. Yeah. So now, let, let's take it from a standpoint of now he's crucified. Do they reminisce it? You know, they, they start thinking about what he said? No, because at that time, I think when he got crucified, they said, man, you know, I mean, I wasn't there, but man, I, uh, man, what was we doing? What, we wasted all these years. We ought to live, we ought to live and serve and preach as if he's going to come back tomorrow. Right. Oh, for sure. You know. Kind of so, like the, the women with the oil. Yeah. Be ready. Be ready. Be ready. Yeah. And, and I, I appreciate you sharing that, Nancy, because uh, I think that's really what, what the point is here. We need to be ready. If Jesus said, uh, I'll not be coming back for another 2,000 years, whew, okay, we got plenty of time, no rush. Uh, no, the gospel needed to be, get it, the, the disciples needed to get the gospel out to the entire world as quickly as possible. And the apostle Paul was going everywhere uh, who was it went to India? Was it uh, Matthew? I'm trying to remember, one of the apostles went to India. Uh, and and there's uh, uh, many years later, they found a church in India that uh, was went back to the apostle uh, Matthew. I believe it was Matthew. And uh, so they, they really sought to go into all the world. Yeah, and I'm, I'm not uh, saying they didn't believe that he might return in their lifetime but they knew some things had to happen first. They knew some things had to happen first before he came back. So they were not expecting him at any moment. I think it's fair to say that. Oh, for, you know, I, I, would, I would halfway agree with that. But, but here's the thing, here's the thing, here's the thing that, I, that I've got as far as that goes, because you can hear some crazy people talk about you know, revelation or whatever. All right. So, uh, as far as what Jesus had said and things were, you know, a war this, war that, all these things or whatever, I'm sure that was going on at that time. You've also got other people, like in today's society, 
that says, you know, when you say, you know, when John talks about in Revelation, John talks about this seven-headed demon or, you know, whatever with so many wings or whatever, all right? You've got some people that say and draw the conclusion that says, and a dragon or whatever, that, that you draw this conclusion and they say, well, if you think about it really hard, we just done a religion bonus on Sunday. If you think about it really hard, think about all them helicopters that was flying over and destroying all these lands or whatever. That could mimic something because he didn't, back in those days, he might have saw what was happening and had no idea that we would have airplanes and helicopters and all that. You know, I'm not saying one's right or wrong. I'm just saying that there are things that you can really think about and really say, man, uh, this is what is happening right now. Yeah. You know, and, 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 and you miss the point a bunch of times. But uh, I'm pretty sure it didn't even Jesus say, I don't even know the time. Yeah. I mean, I, yeah. I don't know. So, yeah. I mean, but I think he knew it more than we do. <laughs> oh, I'm sure. You know. But here's the thing, too. I wouldn't think he would blatantly lie. No. About it. No. So there's, I mean, he doesn't know. Well, he so didn't. He, he, know, he knows when time is close because he said when time will be close. Yeah. But as far as the day, the hour. Yeah. He, he didn't. Yeah. <laughs> okay. First of all, back in Matthew 24, in uh, do you not believe what you read? 24? No, in 3. They didn't even know what the second coming was he was talking about. Yeah. They didn't even know he hadn't even had to go nowhere. They thought he was saying, didn't they? I mean, what were they thinking? Are you going down the That's a great point. That's a great they point. They had no idea what this second when you come back, they had no idea. Right. And, and it's, you, it makes you wonder, uh, did they understand what Jesus was saying later? They couldn't. Well, I mean, after oh, his resurrection. Oh, okay. After his resurrection. That is a great point. Uh, you know, I mean, they, they still hadn't really figured it out that he was going to be crucified and rise from the grave. They, he told them that, but they still didn't figure it out. They still didn't believe it. No, I mean, Peter's fixing to cut off an ear. You, you know, you cannot escape from that. Yeah. I mean, I think yeah. by the time they wrote this, they had a lot better understanding because, you know, all that had passed by then. That makes sense. So, yeah. so once Jesus has died, once he has rose again, I'm sure none of this was reported before, you know, any of that happened. So I'm assuming that after he died and rose again, I'm just this is... that question right there could be toward uh, the, the resurrection and, and you're going to heaven and, and going to return from heaven. I just don't see how they could have gotten that at that time. Well, uh, and, and that's a great question. Like I say, do you really think they got it after he was came back, or what he stated was the point? Oh, yeah. well, after he because it wasn't wrote if they didn't. Yeah, after they he was to, resurrected, they had to have understood some things, you know, after the fact. Yeah, I mean, if, if, if he was to say they understood more, but did they really still? I mean, they understood enough to go out and put their lives mm -hmm. on the line But did they really? <laughs> no, still. Well, remember in Acts chapter one. Uh, they watched him ascend into heaven and it, I think it was two angels came and said he's going to return the same way you saw him leave so they understood <laughs> they may have not understood it at this point when he was talking with them but at that point they understood he's coming again well, well, yeah. before that you know during that time I guess right there we, had, we didn't have the Holy Spirit I guess per se he left, he left us with the Holy Spirit. He asked Peter, maybe says, who, 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 do you, who do you say I am? And he said, who do you think I am? And he said, the people call you this, people call you this or whatever. He said, no, who do you think I am? And he said, you 
your Lord, the Son of God, or whatever. And he said, that's right, but those aren't your thoughts. Those are the Holy Spirit opening up and allowing you to see who I actually am. So I think once they, maybe once they got the Holy Spirit, they understood a lot more than what had happened at first. I think that's the only way I can see it. Because there's some, sometimes you can say, Well, they, they may have, even if they didn't fully comprehend that he was going to die and be resurrected, they still were asking about the, the end of the age. So that still was a question. That, that's an understandable question on their part. You know, when is the end of the age coming? What, what's going to be the sign of it? Uh, so uh, that's, that's a great point. Uh, but there's something else I want to point out here uh, before we move on. Jesus said, don't let, there's going to be false messiahs to come. Don't let them deceive you. Now, I want to show you uh, how they're going to recognize when the true messiah comes. You go down to Matthew 24, verse 27, and let's see what page that's on. Yeah, page 190. Yeah, pick up at verse 26. So if anyone tells you there he is out in the desert, do not go out, or here he is in the inner rooms, do not believe it. Here's how you'll know when the Messiah returns. For as lightning that comes from the east is visible even in the west, so will the, be the coming of the Son of Man. When it... <laughs> When the lightning strikes, you know, if you're outside and you just happen to see it, I'm, everybody can see it that's around where the lightning strikes. So he's saying when, when the second coming takes place, everyone is going to know it. Simultaneously? Uh, that's a good question, but I tend to think so. Uh, I don't know exactly how it's going to take place. I mean, you could argue that, well, now that we've all got cell phones and something, you know, everybody's watching it on their, on their cell phone. I don't know. I don't know. Well, look at, look at verse 30. I mean, at that time, the sign of the Son of Man will appear in the sky and all the nations of the earth will mourn. They will see the, the Son of Man coming on the clouds of the sky. Yeah. So it's some, somehow they're all going to see it. I don't understand how it's going to happen that they'll all see it, but they will all see it. And that's how you'll know it's the true Messiah because his coming is not going to be secret. <clears throat> some people will teach there's a, going to be a secret rapture. That's not what I think is going to happen. All right? It's fine. Now, it's fine with me if I'm wrong and we're all raptured seven years before the tribute, you know, and we don't have to go through the, the tribulation. I'm, I'm, I'm all for it. But that's not what I hear Jesus saying here. When he comes, everyone's going to know it. And that's how we'll know there's not some, you know, some guy out in the desert saying he's the Messiah. That we, we'll know he's not it. So, Okay. Question or comment before we move on? All right, I, I just I just want to point out again. Uh, he 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 says in uh, 
um, uh, need to find it now, about the beginning of birth pangs. Oh, that's in page 188. You know, it talks about the beginning of birth pangs. Okay, that's labor pains. I can add more red. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, so verse 29 on that same, on the Matthew 24, we were number three. Yeah. Okay, so uh, I'll go ahead and uh, jump ahead to that question. I, I plan to get to it later, okay. but I'll go no, ahead. Right. I'll, Pardon? I'm waiting. That's fine. I just, oh. We just okay. went through that, and while I was reading down through that, then I saw that, and I just don't know what that was going to be. Okay. Uh, yeah, let me let me wait on that then. I mean, I could give you an answer now, but. You can wait. Okay. So uh, back to this uh the woman having labor pains, okay? So uh, when a woman begins to have labor pains, her husband may think, yes, the baby's finally here. The woman may be thinking, oh no, how long is this, <laughs> is this gonna last? And if it lasts 24 hours, you've heard of the longest day? I think a woman would say, that's the longest day in my life. <laughs> so. Uh, so what does this metaphor mean? Okay, uh, well, take the woman's perspective here. Yeah, because again, on page 188, I highlighted these are the beginning of birth pains. Okay, but over in the passage in Luke, it says uh, these things must happen first, but the end will not come right away. So, so he's telling them, uh, you're going to see all kinds of things in this world. And that's just the beginning. The end is not going to come right away. Now, having said all that, uh, do I think that Jesus could come at any moment? Yeah. Yeah. For all I know, all the prophecies have been fulfilled. For all I know. Uh, am I going to set a date for next year? No. And I discourage people from doing that because over and over Christians have set dates for the second coming and they've missed it. And people have laughed about it. There you Christians go again, setting dates is, you know, and. Uh, well, you know, I think, I think when we think, talk about birth pains, maybe what we're in is Braxton Hicks. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, you gotta help out me. I don't know about Hicks right now. <laughs> you gotta help me out. I don't know about Trey, but help me out. What, what's the Braxton Hicks? Uh, it's by, by the Fake labor. <laughs> uh, it's it's preparing, you know. Okay. But okay. it comes at the, at the end of the pregnancy, and a lot of women trek to the hospital, and they say, "No, it's Braxton Hicks. Go back," you know. So. Well, it's about what you just said last week. I don't think everything's been fulfilled, but I could be wrong. That, that's why I say he could come at any moment. <laughs> I think the Bible's infallible, not my interpretation of it. Right. I guess they could be moved out any second. They could have already been, and you're saying the other from sitting in. That's not something they want to report. You know? <laughs> they don't think it is. Yeah, oh, that's that's good. That's good. Okay, so and um, so he says here in these passages in Mark, don't be deceived. And then he says, beginning in Mark chapter thirteen, verse nine. And again, I'm not reading all this. It it would be helpful too, but uh, uh, there's a lot here. Verse nine and following, uh, he says. Be on your guard, they will deliver you to the courts and so forth. 
and he says the gospel must be preached, uh, must first be preached to all the nations. That's in verse 10. And, uh, and again, the, uh, uh, I've already mentioned the beginning of birth pains. And, and what that means is you're going to see all these things happening, but that doesn't mean the end is coming right away. It's still in the future. I think we have a hint here, frankly, uh, that there's going to be a long period of time. Uh, but um, uh, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not saying that uh, I, I think it's likely the apostles thought Jesus could return in our lifetime. And I think we ought to feel that way. And we ought to be ready for his coming. And that's going back to what Nancy said earlier. I think that's the point. We need to be we need to be ready for when he returns. So And then and I mean the the world that they knew of was much smaller. There have been a lot of lands that they didn't know people even lived in. I mean, they you know, it was very small much smaller place that they knew of. Yeah. And so they were trying to get everywhere they knew, they were trying to tell people about Jesus and spread the word. And um, so maybe they thought that if they worked hard, maybe in their lifetime it would happen. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah that's a very good, uh, very good point. And with uh, so. TV and internet and so forth and so on, I mean, the word is being preached. So I think they're saying, uh, don't be deceived in Mark 13, verses 5 through 8. Don't be discouraged. That's in verses 9 through 13. And then he says, and this is where we pick up about the tribulation period. So, and it's 6 o'clock. All right, I'm going to give you the brief answer, and then we're going to go into it in more depth next week. Would that be okay? Here's the brief answer. There's three views that I understand. There may be more that I don't understand. One view is that the great, well, in fact, there, I get, maybe there's four views. The great tribulation has already happened. All of this has happened in the past. All of the book of Revelation was fulfilled in the past. And this is called the preterite view. The preterite view. Preterite means past. Everything's already been fulfilled. And Jesus returned in some sense in AD 70. So that's the full preterite view. Now, some don't go that far, and they'll say, well, some of this has been fulfilled in the past, and some hasn't. And I think that's, that's much more reasonable uh, than thinking that all of this has been fulfilled in the past. Okay. Yeah, I, I have, uh, the, the, the reading I've done of the Preterite view, I have a lot of questions about it, and they seem to, what their emphasis is, okay, Jesus says this is going to happen soon, it's going to happen immediately, so, you know, the book of Revelation says it's going to be happen, happening soon. There's other ways to understand those words, and, and I'll talk about that next time, that's my plan. Um, but that's, they take it very, very literally. So they think it's, it, it's already happened in some way. Okay, a second view is that the tribulation period of the Jews began around AD 70 with the destruction of the temple. And the Jews have still been in a time of great tribulation ever since then. Now you may have not heard of that view but, uh, you know, and I don't necessarily hold to that view, but there is some, uh, I think, some merit to that one. Um, again, I'm not uh, convinced of it, but, you know, who, are we to, who am I to say that it's wrong? Uh, there's, there's some who hold that, again, the Jews have been persecuted. They've been through a time of great tribulation ever since A.D. 70. 
You may say, well, they're, they're, they have their own nation now in Israel. Are they still being persecuted? Yeah. yeah. So that's the, that's the perspective some has. Uh, another view is called the futurist view. And they would say, like John MacArthur, from my understanding of reading about it, his view, all of this still applies to the future. The abomination of desolation has not occurred. Everything, it's like he's saying there's, there's nothing in, in the uh, Olivet Discourse that applies to the destruction of Jerusalem. It all applies to the future. That's what I understand him to be saying. Uh, if, if you want to, I could bring his book next week and show you where he says that. Uh, I think I can find it. I hope I can find it. So, so here's a, a fourth view, and that is that there was a great tribulation period in AD 70, and it is a foreshadowing of a great tribulation period to be, to be coming in the future. That's the view I think is most likely, and I can give you reasons for it next time. Uh, am I absolutely certain? No, no. And, uh, and when people start saying they're, they're certain about these things, that makes me less certain they know what they're talking about. It's, uh, five biblical scholars have come to different conclusions about these questions. Uh, and, and I'm open to any view I just want to try to see if it's supported by what the scripture says. So, okay, question or comment before we close? It's uh, six o'clock and I don't want anybody going to sleep on me here. All right, well, thanks so much for coming out. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, I do ask you to help us to be ready. And Lord, help us to be uh, uh, willing to learn from others. Uh, if, if my view is wrong, I want to know that. I, I want to know the truth above all else. So help us to be willing to study your word and seek to know the truth, regardless of what we've been taught before. Uh, because we want to know uh, what the truth is as best we can, and we want to be ready for it. And help us put a, a desire in our heart to help others come to know you. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. All right. Very good. <laughs> we did better tonight. At least I didn't have to make a hold of hand out for the next one. You're all right. Trey, have you had these?